Backyard races have become quite popular over the past few years, but even with more and more people competing in backyard events, none of the popular running watch manufacturers have come up with a good way to track your activity. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a custom activity for your Chorus watch to help you track the loops during your next backyard race. So instead of using the run or trail run activity, you can have a dedicated backyard activity on your Chorus watch. Just a quick background on the backyard format. The race sees competitors run a 6.7k loop every hour on the hour until there is only one runner left. The winner is the only competitor to complete the race. Every other runner is a DNF. Not all Chorus watches have the ability to set up a custom activity, but all of the newer latest models have this function. The Pace 2 and Pace 3 along with the Apex 2, Apex 3 and Apex Pro models can do it, as well as the Vertix 2. Let's get started and create ourselves a dedicated backyard activity for our watch. First, open Chorus on your phone, select Profile on the bottom right of the screen, then click on your watch. I'm using the Apex 2. Then scroll down to Custom Activity. And this is where we are going to add our Custom Backyard Ultra Activity. Next, we click on the plus icon to add a new activity. From here, we will select Outdoors. This will allow us to use GPS during our race. Click Next and select an activity type. I just pick Adventure Activities because that is the closest to what we want. Next, we choose a name for our activity. I'll call it Backyard. Then we can select the runner icon. From here, we choose our data screens for our watch. So now we'll click on the data screens button to choose how many data fields to display on the watch screen. I like to keep it to a minimum to avoid confusion, as well as to keep everything as large as possible for greater visibility. I'll choose three frames, then hit confirm. For my first page, I like to have the total time at the top. In the next field down, I like to have the total distance and the bottom field I don't really use, but I'll just put in the time of day. From here, we swipe up from the bottom of the watch on our screen to add a new data page. Click at page and once again, click the data frames button and add another screen with three frames, then confirm. Now for the top frame here, I scroll across to the pace metric and choose average lap pace. This allows us to see what our average pace is, only for the current lap. In the second field, we want to put current pace. This field allows us to see whether we need to speed up or not, to achieve our goal pace for the lap and make it back within the hour. Once again, I'll just put time of day in the bottom field. From here, we swipe up from the bottom again to add a new data page. Click at page and once again, click the data frames button and add another screen with three frames, then confirm. This time in the top frame, we will put lap time. This gives us our time for only the current lap. In the second field, we will put lap distance. Again, so we have the distance for only the current lap. In the third field, we can put whatever you like. Let's just put heart rate. Once again, we will swipe up and add one more page, this time with just two frames. All we'll put in here is heart rate for those who like to keep an eye on that during training or a race. Now we click next to head over and set up our back button as a lap button. This is set as default and we'll leave it there. I leave the top button set on backlight as backyard races regularly go into the night and we still need to know how we are going in the dark. Hit next. And now you can set alerts if you wish. Alerts can be set for pace, heart rate, and even nutrition alerts. I don't use these and simply leave them turned off. These can be set and turned on or off later if you choose. From there, just hit completed and this will send the activity to your watch. From here, we can go back any time to make adjustments if we wish, but otherwise we are done. And you now have a dedicated backyard activity in your Chorus watch. Starting the activity on your watch is very easy, just like starting any other activity, simply press the main dial button, then scroll through run, trail, run, walk, hike, etc. until you get to custom sport, press the main dial in once more, then select the activity we just made. 
Once you have a connection to the GPS and your heart rate monitor, press again to start. From here we press the lap button at the end of each loop so that the current lap stops but the time function continues on. We then press the lap button once again as the next loop and next our start and we can now keep track of our time, distance and pace for the current lap. You will continue to press the lap button at the start and end of each loop until you can't run anymore. When your race is over simply press the stop button and you are done for the day. For most of the race, I have my watch set on the second screen that we created. That shows both our average pace for this lap and our current pace. This allows us to keep an eye on how we're tracking throughout the lap. For instance, if you want to get back to the finish line with 7 minutes to prepare for the next loop, you will need to complete the loop in 53 minutes. This means that you will need to run at an average pace of 7 minutes 55 per kilometer to make it back in time. Whilst on this page where we keep an eye on pace, it is still easy to scroll up or down to see other pages on the watch face to check on time and distance as well. After the race, you will want to check your stats. To do this, we simply open up Chorus on our phone. Here is a backyard training session I did a week or two ago where I did four loops in the Royal National Park in Sydney. We can scroll down through the heart rate stats and so forth to get to our loops. You will see that every second lap is one of our 6.7k loops, and every other lap are the rest periods between loops. After the race when your backyard activity uploads to Strava, it will appear as a workout, not as a run. This is easy to fix by simply editing your Strava activity and changing it to run or trail run. You can also rename the activity to backyard race or whatever else you like. Unfortunately, your laps in Strava will default to 1km laps and not the 6.7k laps that you recorded on your watch. But if you want to review these metrics, you can simply do this using Chorus on your phone. That's as simple as it is. You now have a dedicated backyard ultra activity in your Chorus watch. Hopefully one day the watch manufacturers come up with a built-in backyard activity of their own. But in the meantime this workaround works perfectly fine. Hopefully this makes keeping track of your backyard ultra training and races a little easier and it might just help you to get through just one more lap. Happy running!